Hi guys, my name is Corey Greenwald. Uh, today I'm giving a talk on object-oriented programming with ES6. The reason why I chose this topic is a lot of you came from basically rooted in non-object-oriented programming languages like JavaScript and Ruby. And being partnered with you and making a lot of references to it kind of inspired me um, to kind of bring this in and show the importance of object-oriented programming that JavaScript is kind of missing and some of the implementation uh, that it provides with ES6. Uh, and I'm going to bring a gaming aspect to it as well. Because most games are, are created with object-oriented languages with object-oriented design. So uh, today we're going to first, here's my outline. We're going to cover uh, fundamentals of object-oriented object programming, which I'm going to abbreviate OOP. Uh, advantages and disadvantages, ES6 class structure, and a summary. We're going to start with fundamentals. So what are some important things to note about OOP? Well, one thing you're going to always hear me talk about is this kind of class layering structure. And when I say class, I'm talking about a particular topic of information. Um, we instantiate these by using the new function, uh, uh, new keyword on a function uh, in JavaScript as of right now until we go into the new way of doing it. And so that's what I want you to think of as a class, like a bin or a topic or something that we want to kind of organize into its own subset of information. So for example, we might have a bin with vehicle and uh, it would have children, car and boat. So uh, this is important because we have this whole layering scheme. And the idea behind object-oriented programming is that we want to abstract all information to the top of that scheme, meaning make things as uh, general as possible so that you can kind of make, the, make it very top-heavy. Vehicles should contain as much information as it can so there's no overlapping information with car and boat that isn't taken from its parent vehicle. Another thing, uh, so for example, all vehicles have a top speed. So inheritance is another really important theme in object-oriented programming. So you have a car which should inherit all of the information from vehicle and then have its own subset of information. So cars all have a top speed and all cars have a number of wheels, for example, where its sibling boat wouldn't have that, but its sibling boat would also have a top speed. Uh, this is kind of new and unique that we don't really play with too much in the way that we've been programming with JavaScript. And this is this idea of encapsulation. So this is kind of our way of hiding how things are getting done behind the scenes. And uh, we'll talk about why this would be important. But you're kind of playing with it a little bit with SQLize with these getter and setter methods. And that's what this kind of talks about. And we'll go more into that in a minute. Uh, so really what this points at is this idea of an, um, a solid design. And we're going to talk about what that means. So um, I've, I've cut off the boat end of our um, model here so that we can uh, talk more specifically. The first thing you want to make sure of when implementing object-oriented design is first that every class holds a single responsibility. No responsibility is repeated. Uh, if you find yourself doing that just like you would in functional programming, you kind of want to modularize that, take it out and bring it up to the top. Another idea is this open-close principle. And again, this goes back into this encapsulation, which is a new idea. We want to open our code for usage to other programmers, but we don't want them to be able to modify how things are working in the background. We want them to be able to set things, but only under our conditions, so they can't really break how things are working in the back end. This idea of the Liskove substitution principle, I think, is really cool. If I let's say was making a video game, a racing game, and I had just uh, vehicles and then a subclass cars, and I designed the whole game deal with cars, and then later I was like, oh, you know what? Maybe I need a little more specific information, like a sedan and an SUV. I should be able to go back into my code and replace car with sedan and SUV with no problems in the code if you've properly uh, implemented this structure. The idea of an interface segregation principle is actually for our benefit, meaning you as the programmer should be able to pull whatever structures you need out of an object-oriented design and whatever methods you need and avoid the ones that you don't want. Also this idea of dependency inversion. You want it to be very top-heavy and not bottom-heavy. Abstract as much information to the top as possible. So let's talk about like what are the advantages and disadvantages to this. So first is there's really easy code reuse and recycling, and which kind of goes into there's a lot of room for expansion, right? Like with this idea, I can keep going down from SUV. I can maybe say like four seater or eight seater or whatever. I can keep expanding down. And there's also the safety provided with encapsulation. You are now in charge of making sure that every variable is set properly and that your user can't break that functionality. Also, when I say user, I mean another programmer. Just let me clarify that. Um, 
Object-oriented programming is poor at representing non-objects. So that's one of the major disadvantages. So when we do like functional programming or logical programming and even procedure-based programming, this would be really inefficient. And um, I've talked to you guys about like how object literals solve so many problems. These don't exist in a lot of object-oriented programming languages. So um, the, the, there's a lot of issues when you take those out. Think about how hard those problems would be to solve without those. So with that being said, let's talk about like what does ES6 bring to this? Like what can we do now with knowing all of this information to start building this? So before ES6, we would use object.create, right, with a parent object, and we would have all the properties of its parents. But what about future changes, right? Then, then if we change any of the properties or any of its um, or any methods on that original object, then we won't have those on its child. Well, we can make its prototype line up, and then we'd be able to get those changes from the prototype. Uh, but with a whole bunch of subclasses, things are getting hard to manage, right? We, we could maybe imagine a better structure for how we could uh, go down the ladder, especially if we had a whole entire, uh, like, 10 subclasses or something like that. So now we're going to talk about ES6 class design. Build a class the way that they were intended. How C++ and Java really do it. Um, and some syntax that we'll be seeing is the idea of a class. When I keep saying class out here, I mean, like, a, a bin of information. And we're going to make a mini game together where we're going to create some monsters who are going to attack each other. And that's going to be the whole game. Uh, and there's going to be a constructor. A constructor function you guys have learned about, but basically the idea is whenever I call a new keyword, I want to be able to create a, um, a, a new instance of that object. Uh, and also extends. Extends is our way of saying, hey, child class, make sure you copy all of the methods of your parent, and now here's some new stuff. And we're going to talk about that right now. So uh, let's go into the code real quick that I have set up. And you can see over here that we have um, this class called monster and a constructor function that takes in a name, a health, attack, and defense. And notice this encapsulation that I do here. You can't just simply use the name of that monster once you've instantiated it. I'm going to require that my, my user uses get name, get attack, and really the important thing here is like set attack, right? You see that condition that I have in there? If type of number is equal to, if type of num is equal to a number, then allow them to set that attack. And that's the idea behind encapsulation. Now I've just protected myself against the misuse of my program. And there's a whole bunch of methods that I wrote here. Um, I just want to quickly show how we would do like an extension, just so you guys can see how to use this. I could say something like class, um, I don't know, flying monster extends monster. And now we've gotten everything that we wanted from the parent class. As long as I go in my constructor, and now let's say I want this to take in all of the same things, like name, um, health, attack, defense, uh, and I guess like max height or something new. And then I would just call super on like the things that I want to be passed up the ladder. And then I would say, you know, this dot max height is equal to max height. And now I've instantiated a, a child of um, monster in a much more readable way. This is really a wrapper, by the way, for everything that we've learned in the past about prototypical inheritance. So this is just kind of covering it up with this object-oriented look. The last thing I want to show is a quick example. Uh, I made a class called Battlefield, which is in its constructor is going to take two monsters. And we're going to battle real quick. So let's say uh, we want to make uh, Omri monster. And he's going to be a new monster with the name Omri. And the attack, uh, health 100, attack 10, defense uh, 10. And we're going to do, let's battle him against Joe Monster, who's also going to be a new monster. What should we give Joe his stats? Maybe he'll have like a little less health, but like he'll be a little stronger and have like a bit higher defense. We'll see who wins this. Okay, cool. So now we can actually go and um, let's, let's fight them to the death. So we need to, <laughs> let's, let's uh, say var battle is equal to new battlefield. And we have to pass it to um, monsters. And we did that here. And then we're going to say battle dot fight to the death. And let's just call that. And we're going to save that. Cool. And so 
Omri won. Check that out. So uh, good job, Omri. And, <laughs> and we can see just some of this uh, code working. And so this is kind of how you could imagine you'd build out an entire game using this structure. You could keep using subclasses and kind of develop this way. And I think it makes a much more logical way of development. Again, this isn't always the best thing to use. So to um, summarize, if we don't get that terrible problem, um, when programming with OOP, use a solid design. Focus on abstraction, inheritance, and encapsulation. ES6 provides a seemingly more comprehensive way to do this and following it as a programmer. This syntax allows for an easier shift as well from a, other programming languages, because that was one of my hardest difficulties switching to JavaScript was getting out of this mindset. And although OOP is great in a lot of ways, it is poor for developing non-objects. So keep that in mind when using it. Uh, thank you guys for your time. Any questions?